Welcome to another episode of The Vegan Pulse. I am your host, Nancy Arenas. And today with me is Gabriel Garden with another segment of Making Sense with Gabriel. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi, Gabriel. How are you? Doing great. How about you, Nancy? Good. Always excited to do another segment with you full of information and power because knowledge is power. <laughs> My question to you from one of our viewers is this. If I'm on a vegan diet, am I eating too many carbohydrates? Great question. Carbs are another one. We talked in a recent video about uh, deficiencies. And that's something that uh, there's a lot of fear mongering around that issue um, when there shouldn't be as much fear mongering, especially among vegans, assuming we're consuming a well-planned, you know, varied diet, and we're incorporating the supplements that we might need to consider, you know, on a vegan diet. Uh, and same thing with carbohydrates. There's a lot of fear around carbohydrates. Um, and it's just all based on misinformation, all misinformation. I can't emphasize that enough. Now, that being said, a lot of the people in whether it's the paleo or whether it's the high fat, low carb, aka keto, you know, um, group of people, um, or other people who knows might be anti carb, maybe it's people who are uh, thinking about diabetes, because diabetes is, uh, is a particular disease, where the digestion and breakdown and processing of carbohydrates becomes more of a concern because we know that carbohydrates are broken down in, into our gut into these single uh, carbohydrate or sugar molecules known as glucose. That gets into our bloodstream, runs throughout all of our arteries to our, uh, and capillaries and everything to the different tissues and organs and muscles throughout our body where that glucose is used as energy. We need glucose, it's energy. It's not a bad thing for our blood sugar levels to go up. Um, the problem is when our blood sugar levels stay up for long periods of time, and that has less to do with the carbohydrates we're consuming and more to do with an issue called insulin resistance. And that's where we have resistance in our body. We consume carbohydrates, our pancreas will, um, will produce and then will excrete insulin into our bloodstreams. That'll run throughout our bodies. And insulin is the signaling molecule, which lets the cells throughout our bodies know hey, we've got carbohydrate or we've got, excuse me, sugar, glucose in the bloodstream. Uh, and we know that you cells need that for energy. And so, you know, it basically opens the door to the cell and lets the sugar go out of the bloodstream and into the body cells where it can be used to do work. Uh, and so insulin resistance happens, not because in most cases they were consuming too much carbohydrate. It actually has more to do with fat and specifically saturated fat. And we know that saturated fat is predominantly found in animal-based foods. We can also get it if we're eating a lot of processed foods that have a lot of palm oil and coconut oil in them, because those are two really rich sources of saturated fat that it comes from plant-based foods. But assuming you're not eating loads of junk food that have a lot of those oils in them or not just adding a lot of, say, coconut oil in your cooking, I would not recommend that to people. Uh, you could maybe use a little bit sparingly here and there, but use it in very small quantities. And think about a healthier oil, if you're going to add some oil to your cooking, like extra virgin olive oil. Beyond the shadow of a doubt, it's going to be safer for your health and um, isn't, doesn't have those large amounts of saturated fatty acids in it like coconut oil does. So that being said, but the most important thing that has to do with carbohydrate is People think about our call, all carbohydrates as being the same, and they're not. You know, uh, Twix candy bars and Dr. Pepper sodas, high carbohydrate foods, are not the same as brown rice and pinto beans, also high carbohydrate foods, right? Because these other high carbohydrate foods come in the form of whole plant foods that are bound with protein and a little bit of, you know, natural fat found in those foods, specifically loads of fiber and other wonderful, wonderful compounds in the form of phytonutrients, which are plant nutrients, and anti-inflammatories, and um, you know, vitamins and minerals. So these whole plant foods have all these wonderful things in them that Dr. Pepper and candy bars do not. And so that fiber and all those beneficial nutrients are gonna slow down the rate at which 
we digest and absorb that carbohydrate into our system and then utilize it in our body again for energy. It gives us energy so that we can do the work that our bodies need to do on a daily basis. Um, and so that's number one. Uh, anybody in the low carbohydrate, you know, group of people who's saying, oh, carbs are bad, they drive up your blood sugar, and high blood sugars are the problem that leads to diabetes and heart disease and whatever else they might say, cancer. It's just simply crazy to try to equate Dr. Pepper and candy bars with fruits and vegetables and whole grains and beans, which are all rich in carbohydrate, but they have all the fiber and all these other wonderful phytonutrients and plant-based compounds that again, slow down the rate at which we absorb that carbohydrate into our systems, which prevents the blood sugar spikes that then inevitably lead to the blood sugar dips, you know, the blood sugar crashes, right? That then give us those cravings for, oh, I wanna go back for the next donut. I need to keep drinking soda. I need to eat another candy bar because my blood sugars are low and I'm jittery and I feel horrible. Well, that's because you're eating these foods that lead to spikes and then lead to these rapid crashes, which lead to the cravings for more junk food, right? And this next hit of dopamine in our brain, oh, I need another candy bar because if not, you literally start to feel bad and you feel depressed. There's you know, a great example of this is that awesome documentary that was made decades ago by a documentarian named Morgan Spurlock. It was called Super Size Me. And for a whole month, he ate nothing but McDonald's, which again, we would never recommend somebody do, but it just shows you the impact of all those highly processed, incredibly unhealthy foods. But those foods that gave him those spikes in dopamine in his brain and the spikes in blood sugar, that he would only feel good when he was eating those foods because he was getting that hit of dopamine and he was getting that spike of blood sugar into his system and that spike of fat and everything. But then within just a short period of time after he ate it, he would get another crash. And not only did he feel bad, but it actually led to like depressive, depression-like symptoms in his brain where he was feeling sad and he was feeling anxious and uh, just didn't feel like himself. And that's how powerful the impact of food is. It not only impacts our physical health, it also impacts our emotional and mental well-being. So it's so important. And not only are these foods, have, have they been shown to prevent and treat and reverse chronic disease, whole plant foods, they've also been shown to help you know, alleviate the symptoms of depression. They help people to feel better in their emotional and mental state, as well as their physical state. And that makes sense, right? One, one thing, one, a food that's good for one thing is probably going to be good for a number of other things in the body. And so there's no, no reason to fear carbohydrates as long as you're consuming in them in their, in their whole natural form. The only carbohydrates that we would ever need worry about are the ones that are coming in all these junk foods, these highly processed, what we call ultra processed foods, right? And that takes things like in the case of corn, we can eat a whole corn, uh, uh, we can eat a co corn cob, I'm forgetting the word. We can eat a, a corn cob we, or we can eat whole corn kernels, or we could eat high fructose corn syrup, which is in most of the sodas that we eat and in, in a lot of the junk food that's, high, that's sweetened that we eat, high fructose corn syrup, that comes from corn, but it's a highly ultra processed form of corn that's not good for our body. Corn's good, corn syrup is not. So these things are very easy for people to understand. Eat carbohydrates in their whole natural form, You'll never have to worry about you know, high blood sugar levels, type two diabetes, any of that. And if you're eating these other forms, we wanna do whatever we can to substitute them with their whole natural foods. And for people that feel like, oh, I'm addicted to those foods, just like Morgan Spurlock was, know that you just have to start somewhere, start small, and a small change over time will lead to bigger and bigger changes. So just start eating you know, one apple if you're not eating any fruit right now and just do it regularly or pick any other fruit that you love. And that eventually will build and grow and grow. And before you know it, you'll be eating less and less of this unhealthy processed foods. And you'll be eating more whole plant-based foods and you'll be stronger and you'll feel better than ever. Happy, healthy plant food, happy, healthy person.
exactly. <laughs> And not only that, in one of our, our previous videos with you, um, when you had said when people take are when people are taking this new journey into veganism, it start you know if you can't do it all at once, that's okay. Start slow. Just take the first step. You know, just worry about what you're eating for breakfast, and don't try to plan out. Oh well, my gosh, what am I eating for the rest of the week? But just one step at a time and as you get over one hurdle you go to the next one and you go to the next one and it doesn't become such an overbearing kind of like franticness that you experience because it's like what am i going to do exactly no change in life most of the time in life unless some miracle happens and some light switch goes off in our brain and we all of a sudden say i've been on a standard american diet for 45 years and now all of a sudden I've said, oh yeah, I'm never gonna touch meat and I'm never gonna touch a Big Mac for the rest of my life. In some cases that happens. Some, I done it. Something crazy happens and we just make the change overnight, right? But for many people, it's a slow gradual process that builds on itself. And so just like with exercise, right? We don't go from a couch potato to a successful marathon runner overnight. We have to do this in bite-sized pieces over time. And lifestyle changes like our like changes to our diet often need to happen over time as well and so don't get down on yourself just start somewhere and that's going to build on itself over time thank you thank you again gabriel and i can't wait till the next time bye bye sounds great thank you for watching another episode of the vegan pulse i am your host nancy arenas follow us on facebook Check out our blog and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you, yes, you have a pulse, then you, yes, you have a purpose. Live vegan.